Hi, welcome to So Darn Fun. I'm Carrie, and this is a channel where we usually talk about quality clothing alterations, pattern reviews, and sewing how to's. But today we're going to divert from that just a little bit while I introduce to you my newest commission project from author Octavia Randolph. You don't want to miss it. Before we actually jump into it, I need to give a shout out to Octavia Randolph. If you have not read her series, the Circle of Caridwin series, go to her website, octavia.net, and you can download the first book in the series for free. It's a free electronic download, which is probably what got most of us hooked on the series. And once you've read that book, they just get better and better. There's also a really wonderful Facebook group called the Circle of Caridwin Saga by Octavia Randolph Discussion and Idea Group. So this particular video is focusing on the creative aspect of how I come up with the pattern for this particular project. And as you'll see, I am using a pattern that I already have that I know that fits her and I'm making changes to it to try to get the look that we're looking for. I need to explain that there's some parameters that we work within. We want costumes that are as accurate to the time period as we know of. So there's a lot to be left up to the imagination for some of the styling points. We try to keep our fabric true to what they would have worn in the time period. So that's a must have. It will be linen, which will be especially appropriate for the hot summer months. The construction methods that I use and some of the pattern design definitely would not be something that would pass in the SCA community. So that I don't bore you with all this rambling, let's just jump into how I'm starting to create this pattern. And hopefully each of these videos will be 10 minutes or less so that it's not um, burdensome for you to watch. Hopefully enough detail that it'll be interesting, but not too much that it will be totally boring. Okay, I'm laying out the fabric so you can see the beautiful colors that she has chosen. She's got three different colors. The rose colored is the long dress underneath and the blue color is the tunic over the top. We're mainly focusing on the tunic today. And that green color is the lining under the sleeves. The sleeve is two layers, so it's a beautiful, beautiful sleeve. So I'm taking a pattern that I already used for Octavia's um, woolen outfit that I made last, that blue tunic. So I'm using that pattern that I know already fits her. I'm tracing it so that I have a copy of the original pattern so that if I do any changes, I still can preserve that original pattern. Marking the front and the back. Um, here's a photo. This is what we're going for here. This is um, the hemline. I have to figure out the ratio of how long that tunic is from the neckline down to the hem and then how much from the hem down to the floor and figure that out so that I can kind of convert that to real size. On the sides there, it curves, there's points on the sides. There's slits in this picture. We're not doing the slit, we're just going down to the point. And then I've got to figure that out mathematically. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out the ratios and uh, applying what little of that I remember from high school <laughs> and coming up with a number. I can't even tell you how I came up with a number, but I came up with a number and it's good enough to start with. So I figured that out, um, how long I'm going to make that tunic from the, um, from the shoulders down to the, the middle portion and then I'm gonna curve down the sides from there. So that number is the, the number I'm gonna work on. Now I'm measuring that point from the shoulders down, how far that needs to go in the front and then drawing the curves that go down to the side. Now these curves, I draw, I look at it, I come back and I redraw, I erase. I might even redraw it again. There's probably stuff going on that I don't even show you in the video. <laughs> that would be way too long and boring. So uh, here I am uh, getting that figured out. I'm cutting both layers at the same time to get that same kind of curve. But you know, hindsight is 2020. I, I did end up coming back later on, which is not shown. And I added a little bit more to the back so that it just gave a little bit more bum coverage. Marking the waistline on both the front and the back because the waistline is a really good point to know where it needs to come in so that I can curve in those side seams as we're trying to tailor it a little bit to Octavia's shape to give her some waist. Uh, drawing in the waist shaping on both the front and the back pieces. 
once I've got the pattern figured out on what I want to try, I don't put this on the real fabric. I have to do what we in the US call a muslin. That's a trial garment. And because a lot of times these costumes take up a lot of fabric, um, it's really good if I happen to have a piece of fabric laying around that I don't need, like an old bed sheet, which is what I have right here. I have preserved the sound because this fitted bed sheet has outlived its useful purpose as far as the bed sheet. And the, the elastic is crispy. It's really gross. So I'm going to cut the elastic off of this and use this as our muslin. <laughs> so because I'm in a hurry, and I've got all kinds of other projects in, in my studio piled up on my ironing board. I did not press this, plus the fabric of this sheet is just expansive. So I went ahead and tried to smooth it out with my hands the best I could, and I um, cut it out. I did come back and iron it later, <laughs> and then and then retrim the pieces. So I've thrown the muslin together, and here it is on the dress form, and I can see that my ratios, with all my wonderful math, was actually too long. And this is why we do a muslin. So I needed to make it four inches shorter. You see me pinning it up so that I can take a tuck in the actual pattern pieces to make it shorter. Here is uh, how you fold the pattern up on those lines that I folded up on the cloth and just fold it out and tape it. Here's my muslin, and I am showing where I've kind of tailored in those side seams to give it a little bit more shape. I'm taking a look at how it, how it hangs, how it looks. I gave it some bust darts to try to give a little bit more shaping. Um, that did kind of cause a little bit of issues later, which we'll cover. But all in all, I like the shape. It looks good. The length is good, which I like. And you might be wondering about bust darts. Oh my, you can't have bust darts shown in this garment. There's a pattern trick where those bust darts are actually rotated to the hem and they are not actually sewn in as you think of a bust dart. Right now, we're not gonna worry too much about the styling of the neckline. That comes a little bit later when I have both layers uh, of the garment finished where I can kind of put them both on the dress form and see how I want those neck layers to fall, being that they're gonna be kind of graduated. Um, it's hard to know right now how it's going to look. So I just kind of put a slit down the front and um, fit it over my dress form and we are going to work on the sleeves now. The existing sleeve that I used on the previous gown I made for Octavia is gonna work just fine to just take it and alter it. So the sleeves we're trying to make are kind of belled at the bottom. We're not gonna make it to a sharp point. We're gonna kind of round it out a little bit so that it's not pointy pointy everywhere. And I'm drawing the curve. Um, and because it does kind of bell out a little bit, there's a pattern making trick where you slice the pattern all the way up and you just sort of spread the lower hem to the width that you want it. Um, taping those pieces down to the width that I want that lower hem and then kind of bending in those side pieces so that it kind of bells out a little bit more. And then you see that it does thicken that upper portion where the, it needs to be a little bit more tight fitting on the arm. Not tight, but a little bit more narrow. So I did come in later and really carve in where you see the red lines kind of, <laughs> kind of carved it in a little bit, but not quite like those red lines. I couldn't find a graphic that worked well. Then I had to draw the part that hangs down off of the hand. Here I'm working on that bust dart. I've cut it out and I'm showing you the pattern making trick, how to rotate that bust dart. You can do this on any, any garment, any tops, any t-shirts that you're making that have a bust dart that you don't really want to sew into it. Um, the problem that I'm encountering right now that I actually kind of uh, discover and recognize later is that it made the bottom of this hem way too wide. It made it really quite fashionable, but that's not what we're looking at. You can see right here, it just flares out too much. And so I'm just throwing that muslin away. I started over, I didn't show you all <laughs> what I did, but I did take it in. You can see the pattern piece right here. I fold it in tucks. So that's really how I want the width of the hem. Fold in those tucks cut out a new pattern piece, made a new muslin, saved you all the boring visuals of that. And here I'm showing 
the muslin happily on this dress form. I love the way that it looks. I think it's gonna be just fine, and the sleeve. I am showing, folding out this beautiful, beautiful fabric on purpose because the color is so luscious. It's just gonna be wonderful. So pinning down the pattern piece that I came up with and crossing my fingers as I cut out the real stuff. It's always a little bit nerve wracking when I get to that point when, I, when I'm brave enough to say, okay, the pattern's good enough. Let's put, let's take the scissors to it and, and just, here we go. <laughs> Hope that it's gonna work out well. I do a lot of praying before I do this, honestly. So here we go. Cutting out the front and the back. And then here's the beautiful green. Uh, you see this is on the under sleeve that you can see in the graphic. Um, cutting this piece out, it's just gonna be wonderful. Oh, you guys are gonna love seeing her in this. Now, I didn't get this very well on the video, but this is the rose under dress. And I didn't spend any time on the pattern here because I'm just simply reusing the pattern I used for her last time. Um, the only thing I'm doing different, I am adding a little bit more fullness to the bottom of this dress. I wanted her to have some a little more swoosh. So we're gonna add some extra gores. There are already built-in gores, so to speak, in the side seams where it, just, it kind of flares out. So she's got fullness at the side. My idea here is to put a couple of these gores, one in the front, one in the back, to give her more swish room. So we're gonna see how that turns out. That's my plan, that's what we're looking at. And here we can see um, the trim that nobody else has seen yet, except for Octavia. This is the trim that we're gonna put on it. So this is what we've got going so far and here's a sneak peek into what you'll see in the next video. Thanks for watching, by the way.